have those Sundays where absolutely nothing wants to work for you. Yes. Can't get some things turned on, can't get some things turned off. Oh. Here's one of those Sundays I should just go back to bed. Huh? That sounds good too. We're going to talk about sanctity of life. We started talk, talking about, uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the year, so just a couple weeks ago, we started talking about how we're doing this series on the names of God. And, and you know, I know there's going to be some Sundays in there where we're going to have to, not have to, but we'll veer away from that uh, because of what's going on. And this is one of those Sundays I thought, okay, we'll, we'll do something other than the names of God. But really, what better Sunday to talk about the names of God than Sanctity of Life Sunday? Because there are so many names that, that, that wrap around that and, and encompass that. So, so that's what we're going to, to do. There's a couple of names that I want us to look at. It's not going to take us very long. Um, and, and we'll go back at a later date and actually look at these names more drawn out. Uh, but there, there's some very powerful names when we look at sanctity of life and looking at God. Because we think this is just something that, that, that we started. You know, the sanctity of life. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Long, long time. I want to start this morning thinking about Jehovah Bara, B A R A. And what that means is Lord Creator. Wow. And we talk sanctity of life. We'll come back to that one, but I want you to remember that. The sanctity of, of life. <laughs> I began to wonder, and you know it's been around for a long time, but when did abortion really, when did we start hearing about that? And I was, I was blown away because you first hear about it, and it's because it was a, a crime. It was a crime to have an abortion. And, and the year for that what was back, um, um, let me find it again, 1760. B.C. Before Christ. It was a crime. Wow. Here's what, here's what, the, what it was. It was written evidence of abortion uh, reflects, uh, of course, the interests of the class and, and, and the, uh, the, 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 the people. Of course, you know, the, the lower you were, the less worried about, the higher you are, you know, that kind of thing. So about 1760 is where this comes from, and it was a crime for causing a miscarriage through assault, with the amount varying according to the social rank of the woman. So, you know, if we were just a slave person and, and you ended up miscarriage, it wouldn't be that big of a fine, but if you were a dignitary and you had a miscarriage because of assault, then yeah, you're going to be punished pretty good. The only evidence of death penalty being mandated for abortion in ancient law was found in Assyrian law. 1075 B.C. So 1075 B.C., before Christ, a thousand years before Jesus, uh, now listen, but listen to this, we talk about being a death penalty, imposed on a woman who produces or procures an abortion against her husband's wishes. So if Jonah became pregnant and, and went out and had an abortion against my wishes, I wanted to have a child, she would be killed. But if I didn't want to have a child, then it was fine. A thousand years before Christ. The first recorded evidence in, of induced abortion is from Egypt in 1550 B.C. You know, when we talk about abortion as being one of those things that's been around for ages, that's been around for ages. It's not something that's modern. It's not something that's just been in the last hundred years or two hundred years. We're talking thousands of years that's been around. The sanctity of life is very important. No place in the Bible does God call for us to abort the child. It was not something instituted by God. None of his names would even give us the feeling that this is what he wanted. So, let's look at a little verse here. Maybe. You all know this one. For to us, child is born, to us, son is given, and government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father. One of the names of God. One of the ones we say, well, that's Jesus. Well, yeah, one and the same, right? Everlasting Father. It doesn't say everlasting abortionist. Mm -hmm. no. Father. We tend to think we know what Father means. Most of us in the church do. Um, but, our, but that's changed a lot. Some people think the Father is just somebody that produces a kid and that's it. What's the definition of the Father? So, for Father, we have this definition. Maybe. A man who is a parent. A man who is a parent of a human being. Okay, not on the grid. Now, there's fathers of, of animals, you know, animal fathers. But a parent. That was just the, the, the first definition. Here's the second one. A man who brings up and looks after a child as if he were its father. A little bit different from the first one. The first one talks, talked about that, that you're actually producing an offspring. A father is someone who will just look after a child and bring them up as if they were their offspring. This is missing in our society. Missing in our society. So many children are wanting nothing more than having a father in their life. The last one they had. A man, uh, a man who is an ancestor, especially the founder of a family or a people. Everlasting father. I think he was the founder of a family or a people, wasn't he? God, Adam and Eve, and from them the rest of us. Everlasting Father, such a powerful, powerful name. We just think about that. Yeah, yeah, he's everlasting. We're supposed to call him Father because Jesus said to call him Father, and everlasting out to be from beginning to, to infinity. I mean, there is no end. We always say from beginning to end. Well, th there is nothing there. You know, that's, that's our little minds. We have to, we have to kind of co compress those kind of things. But everlasting Father is very, very special. It says that He is the founder. He is the one that produced. He is the one that gave us what we have. Always there for us. Always raising us up. Wow. It's powerful. It's powerful. You picture something like that being aborted. <coughs> Jehovah Barah. We talked about that. Jehovah Barah. And, and this is where it comes from Isaiah 40 28. And yes, it does. There it is. Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. That God is creator of the ends of the earth. He is creator of us. Before you were even known, I knew you. Before you were even knitted in your mother's womb, I knew you. The creator. Everlasting Father. Jehovah Barah, God, Lord, creator. Wow, that's awesome. So, now I know you're going to change the slide. This thing is just going crazy. Look at this verse. In the New Testament. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's right. It's another name. No one comes to the Father except through me. <coughs> Everlasting Father, Jehovah Bara, Lord Creator, life. The Everlasting Father is the creator of life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very, very powerful. And yet so many people have taken it away. And it's up to the church to stand up. That doesn't mean we go destroy abortion clinics. That we're just as bad as they are then. Huh? But we need to pray for this generation. Take a listen to this. Hopefully we'll go to here. A 
among evangelicals. The sin of abortion is no different than any other sin anyone's dealing with. Sin is sin. And we need to have grace and love for the people that have dealt with it. And the church, men and women, don't tell people because they're sinning in guilt and condemnation and they're mainly afraid of how they're going to be received by their peers in the church. A lot of what I did was to mask just the guilt that I felt and the pain. It was always in the back of my mind, there's going to come a time when she's going to ask, do you want to tell people? Because that was always my biggest fear. And after I told people, and the way that they received me was the complete opposite of how I thought they were going to receive me. Complete opposite. I was listening to um, someone preach about the love of Christ, and that's exactly what happened. Like his love completely encountered and engulfed my bedroom. See, I can start crying right now. And um, I was never, I was never the same. After that day, I was never the same. He became everything to me. Jesus Christ was everything to me. not only is God the everlasting Father, the creator of life, he is also Jehovah Rapha. Here's what that is. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees, I will, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptian, for I am the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. Our God is not a God who just condemns, that, that, that just sits back and punishes. Our God is a Father. Powerful, powerful Father. One that we should love with all our heart, soul, and mind. One that tells us that you need to pray for your brothers and sisters, even those that you don't know. That they would not Choose that option. For he created those living beings. He says, I can heal them. I can heal you if you have done this. Wow. Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals. I like that name. It's a powerful name. So he's an everlasting father. He's life. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Oh, 
He has chosen each and every one of us. Even those that we don't even know yet. And someone can take that which is a human being created in the image of our God. We need to pray for them. Sanctity of life. Anything and everything we can do to encourage others not to abort. There are people who want children who can't have them. So let's pray for them. Let's support them. Let's encourage those and pray for those that have had to abort. I'm not a woodlock kid. Didn't turn out half bad. Now, brothers and sisters, that's another story. They were in wedlock and they're really screwed up, but you know how that goes. Family dynamics. They're good. But let's pray for those who are trying to make that decision today. Because it'll happen. So if you would stand, we'll go ahead and close, and, and we'll close by, by doing just that, by, by praying for for those that um, are in need. Let me give that back to Ben. Father God, we